Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Still on the story of Zacchaeus. He called out to Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus came down from the tree. Zacchaeus came down from the tree. Oh my God. Oh my God. And he said to Zacchaeus, Today I'm going to sleep in your house. Today I'm going to dine with you. And those who were following Jesus said unto Jesus, I, I have you gone, I, I, I mean, has something gone wrong with you? This man is a sinner. Uh, this man is not a Christian. Uh, this man is not even born again. Uh, how can you say that you want to go to his house? Or how can you even say you want to go and eat, dine with him? How can you even say you want to go and sleep with him? There are other righteous people around. There are other people. Who deserve your presence and not this man called Zacchaeus. This man is the reason why we are suffering. This man is the reason why the whole nation is in turmoil. God, how can you do this? Jesus, how can you do this? But let me assure you, brothers and sisters, God is no respecter of persons. God will locate you out of your heart. God will locate you out of the love that you profess from your heart. If you profess love, God will use that love to locate you. Because there is the seed of God in your heart, which is called love. Ah, that seed that he put in you in the day of creation, in the day that you were created, he bred the breath of life into your nostril. And then you become a living being. That seed is still in you. That seed is still in you. You can still repent. No matter how bad, how bad, how many bad things you have done, no matter how wicked you are, God will accept you if you repent today. If you turn around, if you turn around, if you turn around from your sinful ways, if you turn around and say, God, I surrender today. Oh, my Lord, I surrender today. I don't want to perish. If you can turn around, no matter how many people you have killed, God will have mercy on you. No matter how badly you have governed the nations, how badly you have governed your state, no matter how badly you have governed your, your nation, how badly you have, you, have, you have messed up your office given to you, no matter how much you have stolen from the public purse, when you turn around today and restitute, restitution is that give back to the people what belongs to them. God will have mercy on you. That is... There is an opportunity. There is an opportunity. There is a second chance for everyone. You may have delayed because of the people you came in contact with. Because of the office that was given to you. Because of the opportunity that was given to you. Then you delayed. But let me assure you, there is a second chance coming. And that second, second chance is here. It proceeds out of the love in the heart of God. That love in the heart of God has made men, men and women who have transgressed over God's word, who have transgressed against the word of God, to repent and be transformed again. That opportunity is before us today. That opportunity is before us today. Let us be imitators of God. Let us imitate God for God is love. Let us imitate God for God is love. For Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1 says, Be you followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us as an offering, an offering of sweet smelling savour. <laughs> walk in love, walk in love and see God doing things, doing things new, doing things new. Stop that kidnapping. Stop that killing. Stop that terrorism. Repent and go to Jesus Christ. Find a church near you. Church of God near you. He will receive you. He will transform your life. Jesus will transform your life. Stop killing one another. We are offsprings of the same Abraham. We are children of the same God. We don't have different gods. 
There's no separate God for, 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 for Muslims. There's no separate God for Christians. There's no separate God for Hindus. There's no separate God for Krishnas. We all serve a living God. We all proceeded from the throne of grace, from the throne of love of God, who made us in his own image and likeness, who created us and gave us power to have dominion. Let your anger go down. Those of you who, have, who are terrorizing everywhere because you thought somebody had cheated you or somebody has, has, has dealt with you in one way or the other, you want to show your anger, drop that anger. Drop that anger. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The love of God will take over your heart and the love of God will take over your being and you shall be part of the grace of God. And life will begin to smell good. Sweet smelling savour. Life will begin to smell good for you and your family. Life will begin to smell good for you and your environment. Life will begin to smell good. And Satan will be put to shame. And Satan will be put to shame. You may have a reason why you are doing what you are doing. But today, today repent. Today, today drop your anger calm down calm down calm down put down your weapons put down your weapons surrender unto jesus christ nothing shall by enemies hurt you nobody will harm you just surrender unto god god will protect you god will preserve you some of you are willing to surrender but you think that when you surrender ah they will visit what you have done no jesus will wipe them off the blood of Jesus will wipe your iniquities off. The blood of Jesus will wipe your sins off. And you will start a new life. You will you have a new beginning of life. You, will, you, 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 you will begin to sup and dine with the kings of this world. In peace and in love. In peace and in love. Let acrimony end. Let acrimony cease. Let hatred cease in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let hatred cease. Let acrimony cease. And God will turn things around in our lives. And God will turn things around. And God will turn things around. And God will turn things around. Let love, let love reign. Let us imitate God. Let love reign. Brother, let love. Allow love to take over. Allow love to reign. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Allow love to reign. Allow love to reign. Luke chapter 6 from verse 30. Luke chapter 6 from verse 30. Hallelujah. Give to every man that asked of thee. Luke chapter 6. The book of Luke chapter 6. Luke is the New Testament. Luke chapter 6 from verse 30. Luke chapter 6 from verse 30. Give to every man that asks of thee and of him that takes away thy goods, ask them not again. Anyone that has stolen what belongs to you, allow them to take it. If they have, they will not steal. Do not kill them because they stole bread. Do not kill them because they have stolen some food to eat. It is hunger that has driven them to that. Whosoever that asks you and you have, please give to them. Give. Show love to every man. Show love to every woman. Even if they have stolen from you, brother, sister, remember love. Remember to show love. Give to everyone that asks of you. And whosoever that takes anything away from you, allow them go with it. Do not take it again from them. As you would, as you would, that man should do to you, 
do you also to them likewise? What you, 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 you wish men to do to you, do it to others. Are you hearing me? Do it to others. Do you want men to hate you? Hate others. The men will begin to hate you. You, might, you want men to love you? Love others and men will begin to love you. For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? You don't always have to love only those who love you. No. Love also those who hate you. Love them. Do not hate them to the extent that you want to go and kill them. To the extent that you want to go and harm them. You take their names to native doctor to kill them. Ah, you hire. That, is, that means that you are a hired assassin. You hire fetish native doctors, traditional killers, to kill them in their temple. Because you think you are angry against them. And even if you check, there is nothing they have done to you. Other than they are still living a life. And being happy and loving people. That's why you hate them. Maybe because they are serving God. That is why you hate them. For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. Sinners also love those that love them. And you, you want to only love those that love you. No. You have to love those that even hate you. Yes, I understand that government, they have not given you what you are supposed to be given. They are not looking after you. The politicians are not looking after us. That shouldn't be a reason why we have to revolt against the state. That shouldn't be a reason why we have to kill one another. That shouldn't be a reason why you have to kill the politicians. That shouldn't be a reason why you have to kidnap people to show your anger. That shouldn't be a reason why you have to kidnap people and harvest their organs. Because you learn that when you sell it, you make money. How long will that money last in your hands? Before you know it is finished. And then you go and give an account of what you have done at the end of your sojourn on this, on this earth. Let us imitate God. Let us behave like Jesus Christ. And if you do good to them, which do good to you, what thank have you? You only do good to those who do good to you. Then what is the benefit? He, do good to, he does good to you, and then you do good to him. That's one one, and one minus one is zero. Zero! But if they do nothing to you and you do for them, one minus zero is one. If they do nothing to you and you do three for them, three minus zero is three. You see how the benefit comes. But it does one, you do one, it does two, you do two, it does ten, you do ten, ten minus ten is zero. He does nothing, you do ten, he does nothing, you do twenty. 20 minus 0 is 20. It comes back to you. It comes back to you. This is the mathematics of love. This is the benefit of love. This is the price of love. When you pay this price, you will never regret it. For what benefit do you have? Do you gain? What is your gain? When you do good to those who do good to you. Eh? Where is, where is the benefit from it? For sinners also do the same. They do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, if you borrow somebody because, you know, people borrow people money and say, uh, you have to pay interest. Pay interest. This is one of the greatest undoings. This is the one of the greatest this thing of hatred you lend somebody money to buy food and they say i will pay you with interest 
And then when the person struggles and struggles and struggles, some of them sell their kidneys. They want to come and pay. Because the, the people they borrowed from, they are giving them trouble and they are afraid. Anybody that has borrowed money from people, they are always afraid of them, of those people. They can sell their kidneys. They can sell their children to come and pay that debt. And God is saying to show love, do not collect, do not collect that thing back from them. Do not demand it back from them. Give it to them. Say, I give, no, no, just take. Don't worry, take, take. No, no, don't feel this thing. Take. I have. I have I have more I have more than you. That's why. And let let you share it in love. Let you share it in love. Do not collect from them. Do not take a pound of flesh from them. Because you have the opportunity. You have the opportunity to have those things. God gave them to your hands. Because through your hands, it will be able to reach others. Remember the story of the uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes. It, Jesus gave those two fishes and five loaves of bread to the apostles, to the disciples, to share to others. God gives you whatever he gives you to be able to share with others. Share. And more will come. When the disciples were sharing the, the bread and the fishes, they had 12 baskets left behind. Don't you want to have excess in your life? If you don't give, you will never have excess. You will never receive to the extent of having excess. Why don't we be imitators of Christ, imitators of God? Let us be imitators of Christ. Imitate God, for God is love. Out of five small loaves of bread and two fishes, at the end they have shared it to 5,000 men, 10,000 women, 10,000 children, because only men were counted. And men, in those days, they used to have two, two wives, three, three wives, five, four, four wives. Even if they had one, one wife, you should know that they have children as well. Out of those five loaves, graciously given in love, from Christ to the disciples, and the disciples did not say, let them hide it. Let them hide it so that they will eat it. They didn't hide it. Like they give to politicians, and they refuse to give to the people. They didn't hide it. The politicians hide, hide money. That is meant for his constituencies. Money that is meant for the development of his constituency. Money that is meant from government to grant scholarships to the constituents. They pocket them and they say this is benefit of democracy. How can they multiply? The disciples, when Jesus gave to them these five loaves, this thing belongs to the people. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. Give it to them. They did not hide them. And at long last, they had 12 baskets left. 12 baskets. They were left under the care of these disciples. When government gives you money for constituency project, use it for it. Do not worry. Do not bother. How are you going to make money in politics? God will multiply it. You have 12 baskets left. Let us learn. Let us learn from Christ. Let us be imitators of God. For God is love. Show love to those people that you are representing in that assembly. In that red chambers. Or in that green chamber or greenhouse, whatever you are, you call them. In that parliament, whatever government gives you to give to them, give to them. Even add your own part of your salary to it, to make sure that that thing comes to pass. To make sure that these people are happy. Then you see yourself having 12 baskets or more. You'll be so surprised. And you will be so peaceful. Nobody will come after you. You will not be hiding from people because you are a politician. 
You are supposed to be the representative of the people in where you are. You are not chosen to go and defraud them. No. If you want to have excess baskets, if you want excess success, you have to give what belongs to them to them. And you will see that they will be full, they will be filled, they will be happy, and you will also be happy. And above all, you have excess remaining. Nobody will ask you of that. The disciples kept them. Jesus did not ask the disciples to hand them over to him. No. The disciples kept them. So that those who wanted to hide, and of course none of them wanted to hide anyone, but they can now eat and eat and eat and eat and never be tired of eating. You never be exhausted of food. They are never exhausted of food. Verse 35. But love you your enemies and do good and learn, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great and you shall be the children of the highest. Show love. Love even your enemies. Do good to everyone. And you will see that you sh shall be called the children of the highest. Honor shall be your portion. People will respect you. Governments will respect you. Organizations will respect you. If you do good. Be ye therefore merciful. Be merciful when you see people who are suffering, who are suffering. Be merciful unto them. Be you merciful as your Father also is merciful. Our God, our Father who is in heaven is a merciful Father, a merciful God. Be you merciful as well as He is. Be you merciful as well. Judge not, so that you shall not be judged. Condemn not, so that you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. This is the rudiments of love. Don't conclude. Don't judge. Ah, this pastor is suffering. That's why he's saying all these things. Let the pastor show me what he has achieved in life. What, what is he talking about? Since he has been following God, what has he achieved? This man, this woman, every day church, church, what has he achieved? Judge not, so that you shall not be judged. Judge not, so that you shall not be judged. Condemn not, so that you shall not be condemned. Forgive, so that you shall be forgiven. Verse 38, give above all. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. Give, give, give non-stop, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down and shaking together. Hallelujah. Shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom. Give. Give. Spread your hand. The hand that scattereth gathereth. Give. Give. Give and it shall be given unto you. Do not say, no, what shall my children eat? What shall I use to train my children? I must train my children in Harvard. I must train my children in, a, in a Oxford. Are you God? God who created your children in his own image and likeness. He already knew the road that they should follow and become what God wants them to, to become. 
There are many people who are trained in Harvard today. And there is nothing to show for it. They don't even have a job. There are many that are Oxford graduates. They are useless. Working as corpses on the streets of nations. Including advanced nations. Even in this United Kingdom. Go to London. Go to the city of London. And you see professors sleeping on that bridge. You see Oxford graduates. Harvard graduates. Harvard professors. When they open their mouths and tell you the journey of their lives, you will raise up your hand and say, God, I thank you for the life you have given unto me. Do not trouble yourself. Do not worry of what you are going to eat. Because if you worry, if you worry, if you worry, you may make mistake. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures. Press down and shaking together. And running over. Excess love. Excess success. Twelve baskets of love. Twelve baskets. Excess. Give, brother. You are a governor today. You are a legislator today. And something, money is coming into your hands. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Do not just hold that money. And say, you want to use it to show off. To show that your children shall be trained in the best schools. You may not be doing the right thing. You may be right in your own mind. Uh, do not say, I want to use it to build mansions in this and that. that. There are mansions that are built in several places where no man is living in. They are all but vanities upon vanities. Even Elon Musk has gone to Mars to build a hotel. Some people are going to Mars, another planet entirely, to build hotels, to build homes where they will live. All those things are vanity upon vanity because God will be seen there. Elon Musk has gone to build a hotel in mass. They say each of the, each night in that hotel is five five million uh, is it five million dollars each night. Five million dollars. They are already building another another distance for themselves. But let me assure you. They are vanity upon vanity. All that they have in this world, they have not satisfied them. They have gone to the space. They have gone to another planet to build their own empires there. And they think that that solves the problem. No! What solves the problem is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior and showing love to all without requiring a reward back. But... Whether you like it or not, the reward will come back.